The LEP had several operatives working undercover in human theme parks around the world, because humans did not even bat an eyelash at the sight of a dwarf or fairy as long as they were standing beside a roller coaster or animatronic unicorn. Foley had once reviewed footage from a ride in Orlando that the conspiracy theorists on the council were certain was a training base for a secret government group of fairy killers. In this particular ride, the customers were put on a subway train that drove into an underground station. A station that was promptly subjected to every natural disaster known to man or fairy. First, an earthquake would split the tunnel, then a hurricane whipped up a storm of debris, then a flood pulled vehicles down from above, and finally an honest to, to gods lava stream lapped the windows. When Foley got back to his office, he looked down on the streets of Haven from the fourth floor of the police plaza building, and it occurred to him that his beloved city reminded him of that Orlando subway station totally trashed, almost beyond recognition. But my city cannot be resembled by a touch of a button. Fully pressed his forehead against the cool glass and watched the emergency services work their magic. Paramedic warlocks treated the wounded with rapid bursts of magic from their insulated mitts. Fire gnomes cut through girders with buzz lasers, clearing paths for ambulances and structural engineers repelled from rock hooks, plugging fissures with flexi foam. It's funny, Foley thought. I've always thought that the humans would destroy us. The centaur placed his fingertips on the glass. No, we are not destroyed. We will rebuild. Any new tech had exploded, but there was plenty of outdated stuff that had not been recycled due to budget cuts. Most of the fire department vehicles were operational, and none of the backup generators had been refitted in the past five years. Commander Kelp was overseeing a cleanup operation on a scale never before seen in Haven. Atlantis had been hit just as badly, if not worse. At least the dome had shored up. If that had imploded, the death count would be a huge. Not human huge, but pretty big all the same. All because one psychotic pixie wanted to rule the world. A lot of families lost someone today. How many fairs are sick with worry right now? Foley's thoughts turned to Holly, stranded on the surface, trying to deal with the situation without LEP support. If she's even alive, if there any of them are alive. Foley had no way of knowing. All of their long-range communications was out, as most of it was piggybacked on human satellites that had now by now been reduced to space garbage. Foley tried to comfort himself with the thought that Artemis and Butler were with his friends. If anyone can out thwart Opal, it's Artemis. And then he thought, thwart. I'm using words like thwart now. Oh, Opal would love that. It makes her sound like a supervillain. Maine clopped up beside him. Makchibal, uncle. We've got something on your lab screens. Foley's nephew had no difficulty speaking unicorn, but the boy had some difficulty getting to the point. They're big screens, Maine. Usually there's something on them. Maine scraped his forehoof. I know that, but this is something interesting. Really? Lots of interesting stuff are going on today, Maine. Can you specificate? Maine frowned. Specificate means to identify the species of a creature. Is that what you mean? No, I mean, can you be more specific? About what species? Fully scraped a hoof, scoring the tiling. Just tell me what's so interesting on the screen. We're all busy here today, Maine. Have you been drinking Sim Coffee? His nephew wondered. Because Auntie Calibaline says you get a little jittery after two cups. What's on the screen? Thundered Foley, in what he thought was his majestic tone, but it actually was a little shrill. Maine reared back a few paces, then gathered himself, wondering why people always reacted to him this way. You remember those arc lights he sent to Fowl Manor? Of course I remember, they're all dead. I sent them, Artemis finds them, it's a little game we play. Maine jerked a thumb over his shoulder, toward the screen where the blank square used to be. Well, one of those suckers just came back to life. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Fully aimed a kick at Maine, but the youngster had already trotted out of range. Artemis locked his office door behind him and gave the perimeter scans and sensors a cursory glance to make sure they were safe at the, for the moment. It was as he had expected. The only activity on the estate was over a mile away, where the Martello Tower used to be and where the Berserker Gate now poked from Opal's impact crater. As a precaution, he set the alarms to the Siege setting, which featured deterrents not available to standard house systems, such as electrified window panes and flash bombs in the locks. Then again, Foul Manor hadn't been a standard house since Artemis had decided to keep his kidnapped fairy in the basement. 
Once he was satisfied they were locked down, Artemis opened a coated drawer in his desk and pulled out a small lead box. He tapped the lid with a nail and was satisfied to hear a scuttering inside. Still alive then. Artemis slid the box open and inside, latched onto a 3 volt va battery, was a tiny biocam dragonfly. One of Foley's little toys, which were usually shorted out in Artemis' regular bug sweeps, but he decided to keep this one and feed it, in case he ever needed a private line through to Foley. He had hoped to use this camera to announce the success of their assault on the Berserker Gate, but now the little bug would convey a more somber message. Artemis shook the bug onto his desk, where it skittered around for a while before its face recognition software identified Artemis as the prime target and decided to focus in on him. The tiny lenses in its eyes buzzed almost inaudibly, and a couple of stemmed microphones extended like an ant's antennae. Leaning in close, Artemis began to speak softly so he could not possibly be overheard, even though his own sensors assured him that his was the only warm body of significant mass within 20 feet. Good morning, Foley. I know there was not so much as an atom of cowboy technology in this little mutation, so in theory it can transmit, and I hope you are still alive to receive the transmission. Things are bad up here, my friend. Very bad. Opal has opened the Berserker Gate and is working on the second lock. If she succeeds, a wave of coded earth magic will be released to destroy humanity utterly. This, in my opinion, is a bad thing. To stop this disaster from happening, I need you to send me a couple of items in one of your drone mining eggs. There is no time for permits or committees, Foley. These items must be in foul manner in less than two hours, or it will be too late. Get what I need, Foley. Artemis leaned in even closer to the tiny living camera and whispered urgently. Two things, Foley. Two things to save the world. And he told the little bug what he needed and where exactly he needed them sent. The color drained from Foley's face. Cowboy was working on the second lock. This was catastrophic. Though there were many fairies in Haven who would dance in the streets to celebrate the eradication of humanity, but no rational ones. Two items. The first wasn't a problem. It was a toy for heaven's sake. I think I have one in my desk. But the second... The second... That's a problem. A major problem. There were legal issues and moral issues. If he even mentioned it to the council, they would want to form a task force and a subcommittee. What Armas asked was technically possible. He did have a prototype mining egg in the testing area. All he had to do was program the coordinates into the navigation system, and the egg would speed it toward the surface. Built to transport miners from cavens, the egg could withstand huge pressures and fly at the speed of sound three times around the world. So Artemis' time limit shouldn't be a problem. Fully chewed a knuckle. Should he do what Artemis asked? Did he want to? The centaur could ask himself questions until high time had run out, but there was really only one question that mattered. Do I trust Artemis? Foley heard breathing behind him and realized that Maine was still in the room. Who, uh, who else has been in here? He asked the technician. Maine snorted. In here? You think the Alpha Fairs are going to hang around Dark Central when there's a big old crisis going down? No one's been in here and no one's seen this video. Except me. Foley paced the length of his office. Okay, Maine, my young friend, how would you like a full-time job? Maine squinted suspiciously. What would I have to do? Foley grabbed item number one from his desk drawer and headed for the door. Just your usual, he replied. Hang around the lab and be useless. Maine made a copy of Artemis' video just in case he was being implicated in some kind of treason. I can do that, he said, 